Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, today's subject connects the Men in Black trilogy to the infamous Cornetto, or Blood and Ice Cream trilogy. Being, of course, the Peg and Frost Pen sci-fi road movie, Paul. <laughs> Released in 2011, Paul stars the eternal pairing of Simon Pegg and Nick Frost as two sci-fi geeks who just happen to run into an actual alien. Naturally, the pair help out a sentient being in need, and try to return the titular alien to the stars. Paul received generally positive reviews, and garnered 71% on Rotten Tomatoes. And can you believe that this one is a first watch for me? Well, anyway. Grab your geeky's t-shirt and follow me down to the southern states of America for a potentially out-of-this-world experience as we meet... Paul. Meet Graham and Clive. That is, illustrator Graham Willey and Nebulon award-winning author Clive Gollings. They're only rank-and-file fans at this year's SDCC, though. San Diego Comic Con, if you didn't already know but they're still living it up and having the time of their lives. And SDCC is just the start of their adventure. But after a close encounter of a decidedly uncomfortable sort, the mind plays tricks sometimes. Them two hillbilly redneck guys are jerks. They shouldn't be jerks. What happens to them later on, well, I happen to think that they kind of deserve it. I'll spare you all the rant. L let's just move on. Let's move on. Luckily for our heroes, the driver is not of this earth. This, then, is the titular Paul. An ordinary fellow from the Andromeda Galaxy. Named for the dog that his crashed ship ran over. And the nickname kind of stuck. That sure is a thing when nicknames kind of stick. Well, why do you think I'd be going under this ridiculous alias for all this time? Paul needs a hand, and ends up hitching a ride with our protagonists. Which would go about as well as you'd expect. Except for one weird trick that Paul's people have. Yep, refractive camouflage. Only works for as long as Paul can hold his breath though. And he can't hold his breath this long because he's been smoking for the past half century. All of which leads to another House of Love top tip. Check out your local stop smoking group today. You'll be glad you did. Our boys pull into an RV park for the night. And we meet our fourth protagonist, Ruth. Who becomes our fourth protagonist by way of laying eyes on our third. Permit me then to introduce you to Ruth Bugs, the daughter of a fundamentalist Christian RV fan, brought up creationist, and clad in Darwin refuting shirt, Paul can scarce believe his ears when he is fed these words of Judeo-Christian indoctrination. But his counter-argument is a dramatic reveal of himself, which is kind of a problem since the boys were trying to lay low. Oh well. Our trio of four must make a swift getaway. And Paul has plenty of weird tricks up his sleeve to show Miss Bugs a greater truth. So then, a few of Paul's wackier powers. Tactile psychokinetic bridge, cellular regeneration, although with human-sized subjects, the cellular regeneration does tend to reflect onto Paul himself, which can be rather dangerous with some of the larger wounds. It actually provides a nice bit of drama later on, though personally, I feel that the story would have been stronger without it. But hey, but the suited men still track our heroes. Which is the least of their worries when they enter a redneck bar. Luckily for our protagonists, testosterone prevails. And they escape under cover of bar fight. Around the campfire, we finally discover why, after all these years, Paul is only now escaping. So why now then? Well... Science has caught up with Paul. Up until now, he's been advising the US government. 
and not only the US government. There's a scene of him talking to Steven Spielberg. But now, dark forces wish to harvest stem cells, and other cells, from him. And this is a little more invasive than dear Paul would prefer to give up. So, it's phone home and back to the stars for our parasolar protagonist. But oh dear, the suited men are finally upon our heroes. The situation all boils over at the house where Paul crashed. Where our protagonist makes peace with the little girl who saved him that night. But another getaway is required. And it all comes to a head at Devil's Tower, where the head honcho herself takes charge. But shock! Lorenzo Zoyle was on our side all along. Oh! Ow! And so Paul returns to the stars. Inspiring Clive to write the bestseller of his career. And that is the tale of Paul. But I can't put this one into my house of love. I'm not a fan of road movies, especially not ones with multiple antagonists. But I can't deny that Peg and Frost have written another likeable story about two amiable Englishmen caught up in extraordinary circumstances. Peg and Frost are, well, Peg and Frost. Two amiable Englishmen who run into an extraterrestrial and have to conceal him on a trip across America, which just gets more and more crazy and convoluted as the tale goes on. And of said E.T., Seth Rogen is a little too... Seth Rogen for my liking in this role. All slacker alien and juvenile machismo, which kind of rankles. At least in my opinion. As does Kristen Wiig's over-cursing, Though as a deprogrammed fundy, she does add her own flavour to this pop. And of the villains, Jason Bateman is cool and unflinching as Agent Lorenzo Zoyle, while Bill Hader and Joe Latrulio make for a somewhat bumbling double act, less truly evil than blinded by a promise of power that proves their undoing. And we have to mention the final boss turn by Sigourney Weaver, who gets her own line quoted back to her before catch in hand. The flow is necessarily disjointed as we switch from protagonist to antagonist, and more than once, conflicting antagonist motives pile up upon one another, and I winced at the rednecks that caused such a tense moment in one scene. But this was a first watch for me, and I suppose it's a testament to the filmmaking that I got caught up in it, or more a testament to Peg and Frost's well-crafted double act. Easy and natural in front of the camera, they always give the impression of just two mates messing about who fell into a mess that was bigger than both of them. So was it a good film or not? It's not a bad film, in the sense that it wasn't badly made. It's tightly written, with a Hall of Fame's worth of quotable sci-fi directly lifted from several sources, and it's every inch the ridiculous road movie. But I don't like road movies, because when the journey is just as important as the destination, why bother with the destination? So, all in all, I really don't think that this movie is for me, but if you like road movies, sci-fi comedies, and if you can stand Seth Rogen at his most Seth Rogen, then you might like Paul. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extraterrestrially awesome, check out my crowdfunding links in the description below. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you better days and movies without annoying rednecks. So long, folks!